Hello, and welcome to Chandler in Focus. I'm Council Member Renee Lopez, and today we're going to talk, be talking about Chandler's very own Chandler Symphony Orchestra. So they do provide free concerts. And my guests today are Pam Hahn, the Executive Director, and Amy Isles, a board member for the Chandler Symphony Orchestra. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. First, let's talk about your backgrounds. Pam, let's start with you. Okay. Um, I've lived in the Valley since 1996, and I've played principal harp with the Chandler Symphony ever since I moved here. So I have a long association with the orchestra. Um, in 2011, I joined the board as the secretary. Um, immediately, I was appointed secretary because <laughs> they needed one. And I was secretary for three years, and then I was president for uh, three years after that. And um, in the past year, the board decided to separate out the board and executive director positions and create a new executive director position. And I was hired to take that on. So I have been executive director for the past year. You're doing such a good job. You just, they had to create another position That's for you. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, tell us a little bit about yeah. yourself. So as you guys know, I'm originally from Illinois. I've only lived here about two and a half years. Um, when I was in Illinois, I uh, started my career in the nonprofit sector, and I was the marketing director for their symphony there in central Illinois. It was called the Peoria, Illinois Symphony Orchestra. I was their marketing director. I already had a, a built-in uh, passion for the arts because I myself played viola for about six years in school. Uh, and then my family and I decided we really wanted to relocate uh, to Arizona, and we handpicked Chandler, and one of the reasons was because of the Arts Association. So I sought out Pam uh, a few months even before we officially moved here because I was, I was hungry for the arts and where they were located, and I was so excited that there was a symphony uh, in Chandler that I could volunteer with. Good. Thank you for that, and thank you for coming to our great city. Mm -hmm. So Pam, a year now as executive director, yes. uh, what are some of the highlights over the last 12 months that you can tell us about? Um, well, that's that's a good way to put it. Uh, <laughs> every, every new job has got its downlights, but the highlights I think um, have been that it's a new position and so it's pretty much something that I've had to discover on my own. And I've spent a lot of time getting used to being just the executive director and not the president of the board. And I've been helping the board to get used to having an executive director. Um, and I now report to the board, so I'm, uh, I am accountable to them for every decision that I make. But I kind of feel as though I'm more able to make more creative decisions at this point without having to get an approval for everything. So I've been able to, to uh, attend some seminars for fundraising uh, ideas and information. And I've been uh, really digging into getting ready for our 25th anniversary season, which is coming up right now. And I have, have been uh, forming committees and, and getting the plans together for those. Good. Yes. Keep keeping active. Yes. And Amy, what <laughs> you said you'd been involved now on uh, you've been on the board only for a couple of years, mm -hmm. not only, but I mean, right. for the couple of years you've been here. Uh, but you were on, uh, you know, in in the arts before mm -hmm. in, in Illinois. What what got you interested in the arts in the beginning? Yep, because when I was in grade school and I was in sixth grade, the symphony from my town came into my grade school and they performed and taught. Um, did like an assembly and showed all of us students different instruments and I was I was just captivated and I knew I wanted to play a stringed instrument So, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about the arts and introducing Young children to the arts. so that, that's where it started for me and then I like I said I played for six years I took private lessons um, And then one of my first jobs out of college was for the symphony orchestra. Yeah. So and, and, and you still play I don't concerts? I don't still <laughs> play. I have it. I have it still though. So. I do Good. But, it's never too yeah, late. That's right. <laughs> yes. I could pick it up like riding a bike, I'm sure. Yeah. So in, in the Chandler Symphony Orchestra, the history on it's also very interesting. So uh, Pam, you want to tell us a little background on where the Chandler Symphony Orchestra really started out and how it's uh, become uh, to come, come, came to Chandler? Well, it started in 1993 officially. I'm, I've been told several different stories, but the official story is that Jack Harriman really wanted to have an orchestra in the Chandler area. Um, he had a lot of trouble finding a place to rehearse for the, for the orchestra to live. So he started out in just basically a classroom, an unused classroom at Mesa Community College. And of course that wasn't Chandler. So uh, it was not soon, not long after that, that he started to look for places outside of Mesa and, and uh, to bring it back to Chandler. 
So as the years went by, the orchestra started to grow. It grew in reputation. Uh, originally, the musicians had to pay to play in the orchestra. That's so, commitment. <laughs> it, is, it is. That is dedication. And a lot of a lot of the community orchestras start out that way. Um, and uh, the goal is to not require that because that gets old after a while. Right, right, right. So um, the orchestra did progressed to the point where that was no longer necessary and it became self-sustaining. Uh, it has always maintained the mission statement that it will provide these classical music concerts free of charge to the public. Mm -hmm. And that's been from day one and we've stayed with that all the way along. Um, Jack Harriman is still our conductor at almost 88 years old and he uh, is very proud of what this organization has become. Um, we've, we've grown from just a few people that were paying to play to uh, an orchestra of sometimes 100 people on the stage at the Chandler Center. So, and, and people come back every year, the same musicians. We've got a lot of people that have been, been on the stage since 1993. And I think that's something really, to be proud the, of. Really, since yes. the beginning, still have yes. yeah. members. And, and Jack, and we've I'd done a couple of Chandler focuses with them before. Yes. And, his commitment and his vision uh, to keeping this going after 25 years is, is great. And it's a testament to his commitment it is. To, the, to the community and again, to the arts, uh, to the young people to bring, bring them in That's uh, right. into this. It's, it's, it's been outstanding. Yes. So, and, and um, the musicians are all volunteers, That's right? right? So as we, as you mentioned before, uh, countless hours of practicing and, and, and even during the performances. So do the uh, musicians need to audition prior to getting involved? Like you said, we can vary at times. And my assumption also is that you have maybe not so many violinists that you need or maybe too many tuba. Is there, how does that work for uh, new uh, musicians that want to come in? Okay, good question. Um, that in general, the orchestra as a body is composed of people who have um, either been in the orchestra for a long time or if we get new people who come in who want to join the orchestra, then yes, we do ask them to audition. And um, that's especially true for string players. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of string players, a lot of violinists in the orchestra. And some people come in who sort of kind of know how to play the violin, but <laughs> might not be so great. <laughs> so Jack really wants to hear them. And, and there mm -hmm. are times when, when he'll turn people down. So. Um, they really have to fill fill a standard for him to be right. Able There's still to play. a quality. I mean, yes. it is voluntary, but yes. uh, it still needs to be a certain level of quality exactly. with yeah. the performance. That's what I was going to say, Renee, and I was so impressed with with the orchestra. It's so special because of that. Um, really, they're professional musicians who are so dedicated and so happy to have a place to play um, that they're volunteering their time. The orchestra I worked for back in Illinois, every, it was fully paid. Um, it was you know you, you bought tickets. The musicians were paid. This is people volunteering their time. Jack wants to share the music and introduce classical music to everybody. He wants everyone to have access to it. And that, that's really special, that's unique. And it, it takes the city support and all of the community support to keep it going. Yeah, and talking about the instruments. Yes. Uh, you've mentioned some of the, the strings, but it's getting more so, I, attending a few of the concerts, it's been really, it's one of the big things that I've really liked too is when the conductors or through the process, you've kind of singled out some of the instruments to tell the difference between a violin and a viola and uh, some of the, the, the cellos and the basses and, and exactly. the horns. Give us a little some more information on, on the whole ensemble of instruments. What in it's the made of, okay. In general, the orchestra is made up of the strings, which are two sections of violins, first and second. There are the violas, which are a little bit deeper sound. There are the cellos, which are the bass sound. And then the bass um, which is the super low bass sound, which is the bottom of, of everything, the bottom note of the chord. And then the, the woodwinds consist of the oboe, the flute, clarinet, bassoon. And sometimes the horn is considered, the French horn is considered a, a wind. Sometimes it's a brass. It's actually made of brass, so it's, it's up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's okay. the, the rest of the brass section, which is trumpets, trombone, tuba, um, and sometimes French horn. Um, then there's the percussion, which is just the whole gamut of noisemakers, you might call them. <laughs> yeah. um, percussion is the most fun. That has the most um, interesting voices that, that are added to the orchestra and, and accents. And, and, uh, and the timpani is considered to be part of percussion, but it's a separate 
a separate instrument because it's one person generally who plays three or four of those big tuned drums. And that's a very specialized skill. And then we have a keyboard player who we, we usually um, will engage for special okay. special pieces that require piano or a harpsichord or organ. We have an electronic keyboard, so we can provide all of those different sounds. And then, of course, there's a harp. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was waiting for the harp. <laughs> <laughs> the most important. <laughs> there are always yeah. times when we're going to have need for special instruments. And so not only will we have a couple of clarinet players, but we might have need of a bass clarinet player. Uh, we have a contrabassoon player, which is a double, double deep um, bassoon player. Yeah, I remember that it was recent, in one of the recent concerts. Yes, right? yeah, that. he doesn't play very often, but mm-hmm. um, that's a that's a very unique sound. And uh, we've had times when we've had a euphonium, and, and which is a kind of between a trombone and a tuba, and there are all kinds of unusual instruments. And so there is some music that's written for a huge variety of extra instruments. So those are the times when the, the stage will swell to about 100 people. So on, on the music, so you're deciding for this new season, this is a special scene we've talked about being yes. the 25th anniversary. A selection of the music for this year, were there any additional um, you know, throwbacks that you, want, that you wanted to throw in there uh, for 25th anniversary and maybe something new? We kind of tried to, to uh, open up all the stops this year, and uh, I, I met with the two conductors, with, with Mr. Harriman and, and Alex Zhang, who is our assistant conductor, and the three of us put our heads together and tried to decide what we could put on, on each program to make each program special. And um, in most cases, we have one, usually two pieces on each program that, is, that are unusual or are significant or are um, extra special, either to the audience or to the orchestra. We try to entertain the orchestra while we're while we're choosing music because it's <laughs> if they're not entertained, they're not going to stick around. Because yeah. <laughs> the seasons when they want to be different, yes, right? you want they the do. each season to have they a do. different feel to them. That's right. That right. They they need to be challenged because <clears throat> they're, as you said, they're professional musicians, professionally trained musicians, and they play well. And they they're not um, thrilled by something that we do all the time or is just mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. simple or um, is just not a big deal. So when we throw something at them that's a little more difficult or a little more um, challenging for them, they, they get very excited and they, they really dig in and, and make it happen. So this year, as part of our, um, the biggest thing we're doing on our programming is we have commissioned two pieces to be written by two really fine composers who happen to play in the orchestra. Uh, we considered going outside to find a composer to do mm-hmm. these commissions, and then I looked around and thought, you know, we've got these two guys that that have done composing on their own and really do some good work. So we uh, we approached them, and they have each uh, written wow. an overture for two of our concerts, one in November and one in January. And of course, when we perform those, they'll be written for the orchestra for this occasion, and they'll be world premieres. So those are pretty wow, special. That, yeah, that is impressive. Yes, it I is. I didn't know we had two. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. That's quite a feat. They're very good. You kind of mentioned, too, the uh, v- v- wide variety of instruments, um, but I've also noticed there's kind of a wide variety of age. We kind of joked about, you know, pulling an old violin out of the closet, trying to, but <laughs> definitely would have to audition to get in there. But there is quite an age range, too, on, on the in the symphony orchestra. Some pretty young and, uh-huh. and some... Just say experienced. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Some very experienced so. players. We've got some kids that come in from high school that are, again, they have to audition, so they they have to be approved to play with a with a professional mm-hmm. grade orchestra. And some of these students that we get are wonderful. They're really really good players, and they've been playing with us all the way through probably through their high school years. And we have a 90-year-old violinist who continues to play. And wow. she's, yes, she's uh, also a substitute in the Phoenix schools. She still teaches mm-hmm. school. So <laughs> it's one of those amazing people that just doesn't seem to get well, It's part old. of the culture. Right? It just expands all generations. Right? I mean, it that's does. That's what classical it does. music does. For yes. Us. So with the volunteers, like we say, it's a free concert for everyone that, that wants to come and attend. Um, we talked about the community involvement, the generosity from the city working with the symphony orchestra, with the Chandler Center for the Arts, and a lot of other sponsorships that you have. 
um, that are advertised within the pamphlets. So Amy, what else can, uh, can the community do to get involved and if there are other opportunities for them to yeah. contact the symphony orchestra to help yeah. with that? Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, what people need to understand too is not just the players are just donating their time, but there's <clears throat> the cost of renting the music, mm -hmm. finding the music, the venues. Um, there, it does take a certain amount of money to keep this orchestra going. Um, of course, we accept just ran all donations. Um, we have a box at the door of our every concert, and people are kind enough to donate there. Um, we do, like like you said, if people want to get um, involved, they can actually sponsor a musician. They could sponsor a concert. Um, we have cor some corporate sponsors as well. You know, our pamphlets, as you know, are, have advertising in them. You can support mm -hmm. us that way. Um, so there really are several opportunities. Um, we're always looking for more, more donors. The best source really is our website, uh, chandlersymphony.com. Um, there's a section there on, on donations. We try to make it okay. as easy as possible for people. Um, and when they do donate, if an individual donates um, at a certain level, they are listed in our, our program for the year. Um, and it, it's truly appreciated and needed to keep the symphony going. So. Yeah, and like you said, it's, it's, it's a good opportunity for other businesses and individuals to get involved. I know Absolutely. we have some, uh, some regular reoccurring and some very involved uh, community members mm -hmm. that help yes. out with Symphony Orchestra and you know, definitely encourage a lot of our public to go out there and, and, uh, and support them and the businesses that help the arts. So you're very interested in the arts and, and we're kind of talking about your uh, families involved in the arts. Mm. Uh, so this summer, I understand your daughter was involved with some of the programs. Yeah, like I told you, when we um, were looking to move here to Chandler, um, because of my interest in the arts, I just started searching online. I found the Chandler Symphony, and then I found the Chandler Performing Arts Center, um, which was so great, and found this wonderful camp for my daughter, Camp Kids there. So she's involved in the arts. She played um, flute also um, for two years in, in her grade school. Um, but yeah, the, the Chandler uh, Performing Arts Center, where the symphony performs, has great kids programs, and she does a theater, a theater uh, workshop there. Every time Chandler school breaks, she's in a camp there in the theater. So we all yeah, love the arts. And why do you, in your opinion, why do you think that the arts are so important to keep kids involved in, mm -hmm. in, in at a young age, starting at a young yeah. age? Yeah. Uh, I think for, for several reasons. One is just everyone knows that, that reason. It's, it's just, it's enjoyable. Um, it opens up the creative mind, which all these studies have been done now showing that there is a direct link between uh, kids who've had exposure to any of the arts, whether it's music or dance or theater, and then their performance in school. Um, there's a direct link there between the learning, between um, arts and engineering, arts and math. There's improvement in those skills. So, um, you know, that's one of the areas. But just to open up the creative mind, I think of someone like, like a Steve Jobs who, you know, he, he's not only an engineer, um, look what he's created, but he needed to open up and unleash that creative side. Um, so it, it makes kids uh, diverse. That's one of the things I love about having my daughter in the arts too, exposes her to all kinds of different people and cultures and, and kids. When she just now went on to Santan Junior High and not only does she know some kids from her grade school, she knows all these arts kids because she went to the camp, but it really exposes them um, to just a lot of different cultures and, and you know, different experiences that they wouldn't normally have. Right. Um, but also for the city too, I, I think it's important because it brings people, it brings people in. You know, every time we go to a, an art event, then we go find dinner and we, you know, brings in tourists and, and good musicians who are looking for a place to play. So it, it helps us all. So Pam, why don't you tell us a little about, about the upcoming spring schedule that's come that's Okay, coming up. all right. That, the second half of our season starts on Sunday, January 28th. And we'll really celebrate our 25th anniversary at that concert because that's kind of when <coughs> things started back in 1993. Um, our principal bassoonist, <clears throat> John Friedemann, will solo with Rota's Concerto for Bassoon and Orchestra. And the second commissioned work, a world premiere again, by David McConaughey, who is a, one of our clarinet players, usually plays the bass clarinet, um, has uh, composed a piece called March Militaire. Mm. Um, and so that's that's also going to be on that concert. And our assistant conductor, Alex Zeng, has been in China all summer um, attending to some family matters, but he's also been arranging for some soloists from China to come over and perform in that January concert. Wow. So that's going to be very exciting, and, and our, our Chinese-themed concerts have always been very, very well attended mm -hmm. and very popular because they're, they're so different. Um, on March 25th, the Chandler... Uh, um, 
Chandler Symphony will share the stage with the Chandler Gilbert Community College Choir. And mm -hmm. all that's going to be performed at that concert is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And the choir sings in the very last movement, and it's just out of this world. It's a wonderful piece of music. It's, it's long. It's long enough for a full program. For, so yeah. that's all we needed to program <laughs> on that one. Um, and then on May uh, 6th, is our last concert for the season, and that's going to feature some ballet music by Manuel de Falla. And there's, I'm told that there's going to be an alto soloist that sings with that. So that mm -hmm. we'll get more information about that later. And then Shostakovich's Symphony Number no. Five, which is one of my favorites. It's a it's a beautiful piece of work. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also have two chamber music concerts. We've historically had three each season, but this year I decided to move our Chandler our chamber concerts from the Sun Lakes church where we've had them the past couple mm -hmm. of years up to the Chandler Community Center. So we've brought them back into downtown mm -hmm. Chandler and we're going to just have two of them. There will be one on February 24th at two o'clock, that's a Saturday, and another one on April 14th. And those are going to be Musician's Choice concerts, what we call Musician's Choice, where the musicians will put together their own ensembles mm -hmm. and choose their own music. And, and those are always a big, uh, a big Thank draw, you. and they're very interesting, and, and uh, there's a lot of variety to those. There's another event that's also coinciding uh, a little later. Yes. Uh, in February, yes. we're doing another event. Tell us about that, Pam. Yes. Um, we're, for the first time, we're putting on a gala event, and we're calling it the Silver Anniversary Dinner Dance, uh, Gala Dinner Dance, and it's going to be on February 17th, 2018. And uh, we'll have cocktails at five o'clock and then a plate of dinner with some menu selections will be served at six. Um, we're saying that the dress is black tie, black tie optional. So it, it's a good excuse to dress up and, and uh, feel special for a while. It's going to take place at the Oakwood Golf Club in Sun Lakes. Um, and it's, it's open to anybody. Uh, the tickets are $80, and, uh, which pretty much covers the cost of the dinner. Uh, we're not planning to make any money off of this. This is this was designed to be a celebration event. Uh, we will have a silent auction, and so we're hoping to make some money off of that. <laughs> but you never know. That'll be fun, too. Mm -hmm. Silent auctions mm -hmm. can be a lot of fun. And we've got some interesting things that are already coming in that will be available for that. And so. as part of the, as the, uh, the gala dinner, um, my understanding is that you get to maybe sit with one of the conductors, maybe yes, even that's right. sit with you and that's uh, right. pick your brain about the, the yep. arts and the symphony orchestra. Absolutely, yes. I'd, I'll tell people all they want to know about donating to the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> they sit at my table. <laughs> but it keeps it going. That, it that, that, does, that donation yes. that we said, you know, Absolutely. it, um, it is essential. a celebration of the 25th anniversary yes. to bring people out and, and those that... Um, you know, love the arts and want to be involved in the community. It's a good time for them to come out and also possibly help and donate, uh, you know, mm -hmm. some volunteer and, and, and some cash. So I always say that, you know, it's great when you get volunteers to donate hours and time um, and of themselves. And it's great. But uh, the dollars give you options as yes. a program, right? Yes. And give you the ability to do other things that you otherwise may not be able to do. That's so right. it's, it's great. And yes. I believe it's going to be I'm a excited. success. I think so, too. So. It'll be fun. Good. So with only a few minutes left, uh, Amy, is there anything else you'd like to, to add in uh, about this year? I, no, I think just I really encourage everyone to come out, you know, to come out and check it out. Like we said, it's um, there's no admission to go. I think it's a great alternative um, for younger people, even like for a date night, um, a girls night out, grab coworkers, go out. Um, everyone should go and say that they've been to the Chandler Symphony Orchestra, you know, at least once. Go, go check it out. That's what I, I would encourage people to do and uh, and see what they think because it, it's it's really a neat it's a neat orchestra. Yeah. Experience at least once, and you may figure out that you Correct. really I enjoy it. Probably right? come back. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and Pam. And because we're a volunteer organization, we always need more volunteers. <clears throat> Especially this year, we have extra activities, so we're going to need some extra volunteers. There are places to apply for that or to, to make contact and find out more about that on our website, ChandlerSymphony.com. Okay. Thank you both, Pam, Amy. Thank you very much for coming and talking about the Chandler Symphony Orchestra in the 25th year. Thank you for all the volunteer hours, Joe. We appreciate your time. Thank you for watching Chandler in Focus. I'm Councilmember Renee Lopez. Be sure to watch us next time. Thank you. Thank you.